When you want to create an embossed logo effect, the first thing you'll need to do is create a bump map out of your logo. Now a bump map will use black and white values to simulate areas that are raised and areas that are lowered. So for this particular project, I'm going to start out with just an all white version of the Keyshot logo. And I do have a black frame behind it, uh, just so we can see some of the changes that I'm going to make to this. But eventually we will be getting rid of this black frame so that the only bevels that you see inside Keyshot are actually around the logo it itself and not this rectangular frame. So the first thing you want to do is you want to apply a slight blur to your bump map and this is so that you don't get an extremely sharp beveled edge. Applying a slight blur will uh, actually soften the bevel for you and it will give you a more natural look. So I'll go to uh, the bump logo layer and I'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and I'll apply just a very small amount of blur to this just to soften up those edges a bit. Press OK. Now I'm ready to uh, actually save out the logo so that I can use it for my bump map. But the first thing I'm going to do is hide this background layer. And once you see this checkered pattern, this indicates that you have transparency. Now this is incredibly important if you don't want to see this rectangular frame uh, on the actual bevel. So you can save this out as a TIFF or a PNG or a Targa basically any file that will support transparency or alpha channels. I personally prefer to use PNG because PNG will support this transparency without actually having to create an alpha channel. So it kind of saves you a step. So I'll go to File, Save As, and I will change the type to PNG, and I'll just save this to my desktop, and I will call it KS Logo Bump PNG. And I'm going to select no on interlacing. And now we've created our bump map. So let's go into Keyshot and actually apply this and see what we end up with. Okay, so I have this surface here that I'm going to go ahead and apply that bump map to. I'll double click on here, which will pull up the properties. And I'm going to go to the bump map tab for this particular material and I'm going to load in our bump map. Okay, so right off the bat we can see that it came in, it didn't necessarily apply it where we wanted it to, but I'll go ahead and show you how we can fix this. If I reduce the scale here, that will automatically start to improve things a bit. However, you will notice that it is being repeated, so we can uncheck repeat and that will turn it off and I can also position it interactively. So if I click position and I click right here on the model, I can interactively move that bump map around. Now it is upside down, so I can go ahead and use my angle slider to go ahead and rotate that. And that will put us at 180 degrees, so I can go ahead and type that value in. And the next thing I'm gonna do is, since this logo is actually distorted, I want to uncheck keep aspect ratio and then I can adjust the scale U and V values separately. So I'll increase the scale V actually until we get something that looks uh, a bit more like the Keyshot logo. Okay, so that didn't take a whole lot of effort. Now the other thing you can do is you can interactively adjust the height of this bump map. So if I move the height slider down you can see we're getting less and less of an effect. Now the nice thing is you can also start to use negative values. So if you want to actually invert the effect of the bump map, you know whether you want to have something that looks like it's raised or something that looks like it's lowered, you can easily do that by setting negative values. Now you will notice that my bump effect does look good, but what if I wanted to have some color in this actual logo? Well, you can actually still pull that off and I'll go back to Photoshop here real quick. First I'll pause my interface by pressing Shift P. And if I go back to Photoshop, I have a color version of this logo. And I'll actually apply um, a similar blur uh, to it as well. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'll keep the same settings. And I will save this out. As a PNG. 
I'm gonna call this KS logo color. All right, so now that we have our color map, let's go over to the texture tab. And I'm going to uncheck this key aspect ratio box and I'll go ahead and load in that color. Now, right off the bat, we can notice that it doesn't uh, line up properly. So what you can do is you can actually go over to the bump map tab, back where we know we have our, our mapping, our scale, everything set properly. And I'll go ahead and check this sync box, which will synchronize it with the texture. And then if I just make a subtle adjustment here, uh, in the in the say height or any parameter for that matter it will actually snap the texture file to your uh, to your bump map now right off the bat we can see that the blue is pretty blown out it's way overexposed so there's a quick easy fix for that we go over to the texture tab right here under intensity I can easily drop the intensity of this texture and that will bring it back down to something that's a bit more normal All right, and already that's looking pretty realistic, uh, and a, a nice alternative to, um, say, actually having to model uh, something like that. Now, since the uh, sync box is still checked, I can easily position uh, either the texture or the bump map, and one will follow the other. So any settings that you change there uh, will be applied to the bump map or texture that is uh, working in conjunction with each other. So that's a quick look at creating uh, embossed logos using bump maps.